The recent incident in the Baltic Sea where two crucial undersea cables were damaged has stirred up a flurry of speculation and accusations. Swedish police and Danish authorities are now focusing their investigation on a Chinese vessel, the Yipeng 3, which they believe might be linked to the sabotage. The timing of the ship's movements coincides suspiciously with the damage, leading many to point the finger at China. However, as we dig deeper into this situation, it's essential to approach the matter with a clear, unbiased lens and examine the facts. Let's break it down. First of all, the idea of Chinese involvement isn't exactly new. For years, China has been the subject of suspicion whenever a disruption in the maritime world occurs, whether it's related to undersea cables or pipelines. Recall, for instance, the sabotage of the Nord Stream pipelines last year. Almost immediately, Western media and investigative bodies were quick to point the finger at Russia, accusing them of being the prime suspect. Despite a lack of concrete evidence, the rhetoric from Western officials and pundits was overwhelmingly one-sided. Now, let's fast forward to the cable damage incident. The Yi Peng 3, a Chinese registered vessel, is under scrutiny after it passed the sites where the cables were damaged. This has led to intense speculation that China might be responsible. But here's the thing, jumping to conclusions without solid evidence is a dangerous path to take. We've seen this before with the Nord Stream sabotage, where the initial narrative painted Russia as the culprit. But as I pointed out in my earlier videos, the true story came out much later, and it pointed directly to a Ukrainian diver as the likely saboteur. The situation with the Nord Stream pipelines is a perfect example of how narratives can be shaped prematurely, only to unravel once the facts come to light. Now let's turn back to the situation in the Baltic Sea. The Yipeng 3's movements are indeed curious. It passed close to the damaged cables, and it has been confirmed that the Danish Navy is shadowing it. However, being of interest doesn't mean guilt. The Swedish authorities, while acknowledging the ship's involvement, have not definitively pointed fingers. They've made it clear that they are investigating a range of possibilities, including the involvement of the Yi Peng 3. But they also stressed that the investigation is still ongoing and there may be more vessels and factors at play. It's critical to remember that the Swedish authorities have said this is part of the sphere of interest. But that's a far cry from accusing China outright. Furthermore, the crew on board the Yipeng 3 has been reported as entirely ordinary, with no unusual activities or suspicious behaviour observed during the ship's journey. A Russian maritime official who was involved with the ship also described it as a standard cargo vessel. So far, there's nothing conclusive to suggest this is an act of sabotage, let alone one orchestrated by the Chinese government. Let's also consider the broader context. The Baltic Sea is home to many vessels at any given time, and there are approximately 4,000 large ships navigating its waters with an intricate web of undersea cables running beneath them. The cables themselves transport vital data, electricity and even gas across Europe. It is not unusual for undersea cables to be damaged. An estimated 200 submarine cable breakages happen every year, with many caused by human activities like fishing or even accidents involving ships' anchors. When looking at this particular incident, Swedish officials are considering all possibilities. They're not jumping to conclusions or playing the blame game without evidence. They're gathering data from multiple sources, including underwater search crews who have been working around the clock to investigate the damaged cables. In fact, these investigators have already made progress, but due to challenging weather conditions and the deep waters, it's a complicated task. But let's zoom out and examine the larger geopolitical ramifications here. It's interesting to note how quickly the Western world jumps to accuse China of being behind this kind of incident. It almost feels like there's a knee-jerk reaction whenever China is mentioned in the context of global security issues. In many ways, this mirrors the situation we saw with the Nord Stream pipelines. 
When the sabotage first occurred, the Western narrative immediately pointed to Russia, despite the lack of evidence. Only later did a clearer picture emerge, suggesting that the perpetrators were linked to Ukrainian operatives, but by then the damage had been done, the narrative had already been set, and Russia had been painted as the villain. So why are we so quick to accuse China this time? Why this rush to judgment? Some of this can be explained by the geopolitical rivalry that has been intensifying over the last decade. Western powers have increasingly seen China as a competitor, both economically and militarily. In such an environment, China has become an easy scapegoat whenever anything goes wrong in global security. The idea that China might be behind the sabotage of undersea cables or other key infrastructure fits neatly into the larger narrative of a so-called China threat. But let's be honest here. Just because a Chinese vessel was in the area doesn't automatically make China guilty. Accusations like these are often based on circumstantial evidence rather than hard facts. It's crucial that we don't fall into the trap of jumping to conclusions. We must allow the investigations to run their course and avoid biased judgments that could further escalate tensions. Now, to be clear, this isn't to say that China is above reproach or has never been involved in shady activities. But in this case, the investigation into the damaged cables is far from conclusive. At this point, blaming China without solid evidence is nothing more than speculation. And we've seen how dangerous it can be to base international narratives on unfounded accusations, especially when those accusations are driven by political agendas. One thing that stands out in the current situation is the hyper-focus on the Chinese vessel while potentially ignoring other crucial factors. For instance, there are numerous other ships operating in the Baltic Sea, and the cables themselves are often damaged due to fishing activities, accidents or even old age. While it's convenient to point to China as the culprit, it's important that we consider all possibilities before we rush to judgment. To those who are too quick to blame Chinese vessels for every mishap, I urge you to think critically. The global stage is far more complex than we often acknowledge. With growing international tensions, it's all too easy to blame China for every incident that occurs on the high seas. But let's not forget that, just like any other country, China has its own interests to protect, and it operates under international laws that it is expected to follow. So, before jumping on the anti-China bandwagon, we should let the investigation unfold and refrain from sensationalizing or misinterpreting the evidence. As we close this discussion, I encourage you to think carefully about the broader implications of jumping to conclusions in situations like this. Just as we saw with the Nord Stream pipeline sabotage, it's crucial not to let our biases cloud our judgment. We must allow the facts to speak for themselves and not let political agendas dictate the narrative. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Do you think China is really behind this sabotage or is this just another case of jumping to conclusions? Share your opinions in the comments below and make sure to like, share and subscribe for more analysis on this and other global issues. Your engagement helps drive these important conversations forward.